Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And those of you who have been on my channel for a long time know that this How to Draw book by Christopher Hart, this kids draw manga book, was the start of my drawing career. Um, I got it on a camping trip and I drew from it compulsively and it slowly got me interested in drawing in general. Um, it's one of those step-by-step, -step, like start with a circle kind of drawing books. And I've drawn stuff from it in the past for a video, uh, just out of nostalgia. But then recently I saw this. This is the 2020 version of the same kind of style of book by the same author. And I knew that I had to give this a look, um, review it, and try to draw some of the stuff from it because I love the idea of, you know, someone who's like, you know, a professional artist, um, trying one of these starter drawing books and seeing if they're actually like helpful and if they would be helpful to a beginner. The first thing I wanna draw from this book is actually this one. Um, it's called Adorable Girl. Now, I feel like this drawing is, it's a little strange. There's a lot of ones that I feel like look perfectly fine. This one is a bit off and I feel like it could lead a beginner down maybe the wrong path. Um, as I was led down many times. <laughs> this is a very like standard Christopher Hart anime happy girl look. And I feel like what this should be used for is actually to help explain a beginner um, how to show a character like whose head is turned down just because I feel think we can do like an adorable Kubrick stare kind of uh, technique with that. I'll sort of show that to you in a second. And I also feel like in a how to draw book, it would be really helpful to not start with the entire face already drawn. Um, because I feel like for beginners, the biggest problem is like figuring out like placement of everything. Like where do you put the nose? How do you decide how far apart the eyes should go? So I'm gonna try to draw this and see how it goes. So I'm heavily influenced by manga, though I wouldn't say my style is necessarily super anime. I'll try to adjust it so that it's a little bit more so, just so that this is more fair and accurate to the prompt. Um, speaking of accurate to the prompt, the text by her face says, I wonder if she taught this look to her puppy, which made me think that her expression should be more of a pleading, um, turned down looking up sort of like puppy eye look. So that's what I'm going to go with uh, for the redraw. Now the core thing that I noticed while I was drawing and something I just started thinking about for some reason is that in a lot of these shape-based how to draw books I always assumed that the um, author or the, the artist I suppose um, was actually following those steps but I think they're reverse engineering it because I don't think anybody draws starting with just like a shape unless they are actually beginners um, so there's foundational stuff that you have to like scribble down really quickly in order for the pose to look right and the body to sort of like be in a way that makes sense and in this particular like tutorial it does seem like there actually isn't any construction of her body underneath it seems like her um, neck and her arms and everything are drawn after her head and it all sort of just like cascades down from the bottom of her chin um, that's something I highly recommend against when you're a beginner um, not starting Starting with the head, it's it's something that I did and it was a very hard habit to break. It's okay to scribble the head out when you're first starting your sketch, but you want to really quickly establish the parts of the body that are holding the weight. So in this example it would be her elbows, um, and in a full body shot it would be the feet. Um, another thing that I changed about her design a little bit was that I noticed that her hair was two different textures. She has like a really straight, very harsh like French bob, but then her bangs are kind of fluffy. And because I talked about fluffy hair being cute, um, I decided to just make all of her hair that sort of like wavy, curly, fluffy look. I just think it makes more sense and would be probably easier for a beginner to deal with only one texture of hair. Um, and there's also a lot more room for like kind of playing around and messing up in curly wavy hair whereas straight hair can look really strange if it's not contoured in exactly the right way. And then I reverse engineered my um, illustration so that I could show the uh, shapes that we're dealing with and I showed how they're um, interacting with each other and overlapping with each other which is a really crucial skill that can help a beginner go from beginner to intermediate. The next one I want to try to draw is this guy. This is Studious Boy with Glasses. Glasses are one of those things that are like kind of difficult when you're trying to switch in from beginner to intermediate. And I feel like this is one of the things, if you can draw a good accessory on the face without like muddling it up too much, that is a good sign that you're like moving up in the world skill-wise. So let's give this one a shot. 
So this drawing actually has a bad case of what is called feature creep, where the facial features are sort of crawling out to the sides of the face, even though he's at this three-fourths angle. Um, he doesn't have a lot of like cheek and skull showing, um, which kind of gives it like a weird warped look. Um, one of the ways that I learn to avoid this myself is to make sure that I'm drawing like a skull shape and making sure that I'm actually like drawing that round um, back of your head part of the character and trying to focus on the face actually being like its own separate part of the head. The face doesn't crawl all the way up to um, you know the region of like your scalp. There is a section of your head where your face can um, exist and it's going to leave some space for your like your cheekbone, the side of your jaw, your ear, and the back of your head. So that's the first thing that I changed for him. Uh, there's also some very questionable advice about how to draw glasses on a character. They um, expressly say that you should not make the lens is too small and they should not touch the eye but when the character's head is turned they should be interacting with the eye there's just no way to avoid that if you constantly make it so that the glasses are a perfect circle with the eyes in the center um, which is also a bit of advice that's explained on another page uh, with a different character with glasses that the, the eye should be at the center of the lens um, that's just generally not true unless the character is looking straight on and has their glasses relatively high up on their nose it shouldn't be in the center um, because the glasses are sitting forward away from the face and so when you turn the character's head it's always going to be um you know adjusting and moving around with the nose um, and it won't be like stickered onto the eye so um, not being afraid to have the glasses overlap a bit with the side of the eye you can like fade out those lines a little bit that's something that a lot of anime does actually do um, but uh, either way like making sure it's placed properly and then just like dealing with the interaction between the eye and the side of the glasses is probably the better choice rather than just like trying to force them to be in a place where it's easier to draw. Next I wanted to draw an actual scene. They do have like more in-depth, more full body ones, and I decided on this one called Bad Kitty. Um, the narrative here is that... Oh. 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 He's... He's a very fine and normal cat. Anyway, um, this is a cat that's knocked over a water jug and she's embarrassed and upset about it and he's, um, he's doing his thing down there. Um, there's definitely a lot of things that I would maybe change about this, uh, so I definitely wanted to give this scene a shot and try to see if I can uh, break down my version of this in a way that would be as clear as what we're seeing here. So my number one complaint about this scene um, that's really getting to me because this is something that I was still having trouble with all the way into art school, which is honestly embarrassing, but it's the characters interacting with their environment and with their, what they're supposed to be paying attention to. Uh, now I think it's perfectly fine to like cheat out your character, which is like, it's like a play term for when you're turning your body more towards the camera so that it's easier to see your movements from the audience perspective. I think that's okay, but there's a, a level where it goes too far, especially with drawing, where your characters aren't even really looking at or reacting to the thing they're supposed to be reacting to. So she's staring straight out at the audience so is the cat thing um, and nobody's looking at the jug of water that's spilled um, which I feel like kind of like defeats the entire purpose of this narrative and the water jug and all of that so um, I definitely think if I was to redraw this one and um, sort of establish this as an advanced practice in the book for how to like construct a scene I would still try to make it relatively beginner friendly by not having her pose be too difficult I tried to stick roughly to the same exact pose though I did change her hand a little bit just because I feel like um, for surprise like grabbing her cheek wasn't as good and then I wanted to make a little bit more movement with the cat um, I wanted the cat to be walking away from the jug um, which helps us understand what happened and I wanted her to be looking down at it so we're at least even though you know she's not like super dynamically interacting with the object or the cat we still get the story um, I also think that changing her facial expression up a little bit makes more sense because she does seem to be like embarrassed looking they even refer 
to the lines on her face is embarrassment lines. And I don't know why she'd be embarrassed, um, more just like dismayed, disappointed, um, upset, uh, because I mean, she's not the one who, who knocked it over. Um, and I changed up the design for the cat. I feel like this is like, this is a very like Americanized like Pokemon misunderstanding of like how anime animals are designed. He just doesn't, he doesn't really look um, particularly like manga to me um, and I think that for a beginner it actually would be easier just to give the cat like these like dash or dot lines um, I find that like with anime animals if you really simplify the face chances are they're going to be cute even if your drawing level is relatively low um, whereas it becomes much more difficult when you're adding in like the irises and the whites of the eyes for it not to look creepy um, I kept pretty much the same color palette I do think that the magenta and purple um, is a little bit um, abrasive, but it does have kind of like a nice retro anime feel, so I'm glad I stuck with it. Um, and they described a lot of detail about like why all these choices are made, like they want her um, toes pointed in. Uh, that wouldn't have been my like initial reaction probably if I was just described the scene and asked to draw it. I would probably have a more active pose like her moving her feet away from the water or lifting one up. Um, that's a good way to show that the character is like, ah, something's spilling on the floor. Um, but I decided to keep with the pose like as accurately as I could since I was already changing so many other things. It is pretty difficult to take these things and actually simplify them down. Um, there are a lot of like little intricacies when it comes to drawing that I really don't think about in this like shape format. Um, so actually like figuring out a way to show a beginner how to do it, it's, it's pretty tricky. Um, I definitely think I would have introduced the idea of the hands being separate from the arms and then connecting the arms to the shoulders. I feel like that's a great beginner's trick um, as long as they're not like too crazy with it because it helps you visualize the pose without having to like stress about the forearm and everything um, and it can help the pose sort of flow better but I tried to separate everything I would definitely separate the legs from the skirt I think that not knowing what's going on under the skirt can lead to placing the legs completely wrong um, so here's my little version so that was um, drawing anime from simple shapes, my review and my sort of like redrawing my attempts. Um, I'm I have a soft spot for Christopher Hart, honestly, um, because uh, his book literally started me on my drawing journey, and so I will always be grateful to him for that. Um, and yeah, let me know if you guys ever use these how to draw books or if you just like learn from YouTube or whatever. Um, I'm always very interested to hear how everybody started. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Huge thanks to my wonderful patrons, including Katsuki, News Milk, Strawberry Andromeda, Raven's Crow, Zocelot, Winterheart, Harold Bird, Jabber Dabber Doo, Teddy Spaghetti, Gender Was Stolen, For Spookable, Ah, it's Jamal! Kay, Rodrigo, Momok, Kadaria, Night Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, Middle Z, Lily Alert, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsubaki, Michael Lavalee, Cutie Pie, Ruin Raincrow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, Your Boy ST, JJ Jade, and of course, Blah 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 Blah.